Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam May June 2021, paper 62. Let's start it. Question 1 Barium sulfate is an insoluble salt. Barium sulfate can be made by reacting excess aqueous sodium sulfate with aqueous barium chloride, as shown here from this equation. A student made a sample of barium sulfate using the following steps. Name the items labeled A and B. A is a glass rod and B is a conical flask. Name the process in step 3. This process is filtration. C. The general name for the solid in step 3 is residue. State the general name for solution obtained in process 3. The solution obtained here is filtrate. D. Two more steps, step 4 and step 5, are needed to obtain a pure sample of barium sulfate. In each of these steps, something is removed from the residue. State what is done in each step and identify the substance removed. Step 4. Rinse the residue with water. We do this step to remove the soluble impurities. Here, the soluble impurities are sodium sulfate and sodium chloride. He mentioned from the beginning that we have sodium sulfate in excess, so it has to be removed by rinsing the residue with water. And sodium chloride, which is formed as a product here, also soluble in water and can be removed same way. Step 5, drying the residue. And of course, the substance removed here is water. Question 2, a student investigate the volume of gas made when sodium carbonate react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Five experiments were carried out using the apparatus shown. Here, by measuring cylinder, measure 16 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid and pour them in this boiling tube. Set the apparatus as shown here in the diagram. Then, remove this bung. Add 2.5 gram of sodium carbonate, then immediately put the bung back in its position. Okay, you can see the carbon dioxide gas collected here in this inverted cylinder. When no more gas being collected, the volume of gas is measured from the scale of this inverted cylinder. The student repeat this experiment for more time. Each time we are altering the volume of hydrochloric acid, 14 centimeter cube, then 12 centimeter cube, 10 cm cube. Finally, in experiment 5, it's 6 cm cube. The information in the description of the experiment and the inverted measuring cylinder diagram to complete the table. First, write the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid used in these five experiments 16, 14, 12, 10, and finally 6 cm cube. To calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas collected, this is inverted measuring cylinder, so the scale will start from the top by zero, and we will go down until find this reading, which is 56. Then again, we will do this for the second diagram, go down to find the reading, inverted reading, which is 49, 44, 37, and finally it will be 26. Write a suitable scale on the y-axis and plot the results from experiment 1 to 5 on the grid. Draw a straight line of this fit. First, you have to choose a suitable scale for the y-axis. Label the y-axis and write the units if it is not mentioned. Okay? Then draw a line of best fit, best fit between these points. Drawing this curve is for four marks. First mark is for labeling the y-axis and second, for drawing the straight line correctly, there will be two points, two marks for correct points. And take care that because you will lose one mark for every incorrect point. From your graph, deduce the volume of gas that would be collected if seven centimeter cube of dilute hydrochloric acid was used. Show clearly on the grid how you work it out this answer. So here we will go for 7 cm cube of hydrochloric acid, draw a vert vertical line till meet our curve here, then 
intersected with the y-axis to find the result, which is 29 centimeter cube of carbon dioxide gas. Here, this question is for two mark, one mark for the work done on the curve, and the second mark for correct answer, which is 29. Second question, the volume of gas made by only one centimeter cube of the acid can be calculated using this equation. The volume of gas per one centimeter of the acid equal to the volume of gas collected divided by the volume of the acid. So you will write your answer, use your answer in the first part of the question to calculate the volume of the gas made by one centimeter cube of the acid. The volume of gas is 29 and the volume of acid is 7. So we will divide 29 by 7 and the answer will be 4.14 centimeter cube. The bung was removed and then replaced immediately after sodium carbonate was added. We have to replace it immediately because the reaction will start immediately and the gas will escape if we didn't close the bung. So the question is explain why the bung must be replaced immediately after the sodium carbonate is added. It has to be replaced immediately to prevent the escape of the gas. Explain how the apparatus could be altered so that the bung doesn't have to be removed. You may draw a diagram to explain your answer. Here I choose to use a divided flask in which we separate the reactant from each other using a glass wall that divide the flask in two parts. One part will be for HCl and the second part will be for sodium carbonate. Just tilt the flask to start the reaction by mixing the reactant together. You can choose another option by putting HCl in a small test tube inside the flask and again you can tilt the flask to mix the ingredient and start the reaction. State one advantage of using burette rather than measuring cylinder. We know of course that burette has much more accurate measuring than the measuring cylinder. In experiment one to five, sodium carbonate was in excess. So HCl is a limiting reagent. Sketch on the grid. What would you expect if this experiment were repeated using acid of half concentration? Draw the curve and label with F. So again, we will go back to the curve and draw another line if we use HCl with half concentration. We will go for each value of the first curve and divide it by half because we will get half the concentration of carbon dioxide gas by using half concentration of the HCl. So we will divide the value of each point by half and draw another line here, label it by F. Question 3. Solution G and solid H were analyzed. Test on solution G first. Solution G were divided into three portions and we will have three tests. First one, sodium hydroxide was added dropwise, then in excess for the first portion of solution G. If we add sodium hydroxide dropwise, white precipitate is formed and then added in excess, this precipitate will not dissolve in excess. This will happen only for calcium ions. So you know here that the cation is calcium. Test two, about one centimeter cube of dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous silver nitrate were added to the second portion of solution G. Using silver nitrate in acidic medium, you know that is, this is the test for halide ions. And the observation here, yellow precipitate, so this anion is iodide. Test three, about 10 centimeter cube of aqueous hydrogen peroxide was added to the third portion of solution G. The gas produced was tested. Here, the iodide ion catalyzes the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And furthermore, the oxygen oxidized iodide ions into iodine. So the mixture became brown and bubbled gas 
relight the glowing splint. We know that the gas that relight the glowing splint is oxygen gas, and the brown color is because the formation of iodine. Identify the gas produced in test three. The gas that relight the glowing splint is oxygen. B, use the results of test one and test two to identify solution G. We said before that the cation is calcium and the anion is iodide, so solution G is calcium iodide. Test on solid H. Solid H is hydrated copper sulfate. Complete the expected observations. About half of the solid H was placed in a boiling tube and heated using Panson burner. This is hydrated salt. It will lose water by heating, so hydrated salt will convert to anhydrous salt. The observation here depend on the color, different color for hydrated and anhydrous salts of copper sulfate. The hydrated salts are blue and the anhydrous salt are white. So by heating here, the observation will be changing the color from blue to white. He need here two marks, so it will be two observation. You can write that white fumes given off or few droplets co uh, collected at the top of the test tube. D, flame test was carried out on solid H and the observation will be the flame test for copper ions. It will be blue-green blue color. The remaining solid edge was placed in a boiling tube. About 10 cm cube of distilled water was added to the boiling tube. The tube was shaken to dissolve the solid edge. Solid edge was divided into two equal parts. Aqueous ammonia was added dropwise and then in excess. This is the test for copper ions. We know from the beginning that this is a copper sulfate solution. So test copper ions by using ammonia will give you a light blue precipitate that will dissolve in excess to give a deep blue solution. Here, difference in the color of the blue precipitate and the blue solution will give you the full, these three marks, give you full mark for this question because you know exactly this is a precipitate and this is a deep blue solution that form it when the precipitate dissolve in excess ammonia. F. One centimeter cube of dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous barium nitrate added to the second portion. Barium nitrate will react with copper sulfate to form a precipitate of barium sulfate which is a white precipitate. So the observation here is the formation of white precipitate. Mineral absinthe contain hydrated magnesium sulfate. When absinthe is heated strongly, it loses water and eventually become anhydrous magnesium sulfate. So you will start this experiment by hydrated salt to get anhydrous salt by heating. Plan an investigation to find the percentage by mass of water in the sample. Your plan should include the calculation for the percentage by mass water and you have access to common laboratory apparatus. First point, weigh 10 mg of Epsom salt or just write a known mass of Epsom salt. Second, you have to heat in a crucible using Benson burner. After heating, reweight the sample again, then heat again. You should continue heating and reweighing until you reach a constant mass. A constant mass means that the weight of the sample doesn't change. There is no more water to lose. So when you reach a constant mass, you can calculate the mass of water by subtracting the original mass minus the final mass. Then use this answer, which is the mass of water, to calculate the percentage of water in the sample by dividing the mass of water, divide the mass of the original sample multiplied by 100. To get full mark in this question, this is for six marks, you have to follow these points. Specify a certain mass or just write a known mass of Epsom salt. You have to mention the tools that you used in this experiment and the procedures that you follow. And to explain the main concept of this experiment, which is heating till constant mass, 
that to show that you understand the concept of the experiment, then you have to do the calculation. To get this six mark, you have to cover all these points. Here, we reach to the end of our exam. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.